Uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. So to test our lecture during this Hari Raya holiday, uh, I will giving you a lecture on lecture 11. The topic is about stacking. So basically this is a quite a short lecture. Um, you will learn a different type of stacking techniques. Basically there are three techniques um, and you are going to learn that, that all three kind of uh, stacking techniques that being used in the seismic data processing. So the lesson outcome from this lecture is basically at the end of this lecture you should be able to differentiate between horizontal and vertical stacking. Okay, basically there are two types of stacking techniques, horizontal and vertical. The one that you see most of the time, which is the seismic section, is a horizontal stacking, while the vertical stacking is a little bit different from the horizontal one. Second lesson outcome basically you should be able to analyze the effect of velocity in stacking. Okay, and the third one, you should be able to perform the stacking method on the real seismic data. This, is, this lesson outcome are relevant to the following CLO, CLO number two, which is for the velocity analysis and the correction on the, on the seismic data, as well as CLO number three, which is the process of real seismic reflection data. Okay, as we see in the previous lecture, where we learn and where we learn about the velocity analysis, now we will look into the out the uh, consequence after we have the velocity outcome, we apply the velocity in terms of the stacking techniques. And the following CLO has been mapped to the following uh, program outcome, which is the program outcome number three, as well as program outcome number five. Alright, so where does the stacking come in? Basically, uh, if you do a, a preset time migration, stacking is uh, stacking came after you do the migration while in this case we do a post stack time migration where the stacking come first before the migration session okay a little bit of introduction there are two types of stacking techniques with the first one is horizontal stacking okay the one that normally we did in uh, in our seismic data processing uh, procedure horizontal stacking is basically stuck in the horizontal direction by the sum of the animal corrected data Okay, the animal corrected data that you you obtain from the velocity analysis being used for the horizontal stacking. Okay, therefore, after the outcome from the horizontal stacking will give you a seismic set section. The vertical stacking is on the on the other hand is the add and average the seismic record over the same short position. In other words, you stack over a particular seismic trace. Okay, however, most of the time we the we is is quite rare that we are using the vertical stacking in our seismic data processing because it will not give you a clear representative of your subsurface. We are we prefer to use the horizontal stacking of instead of vertical stacking. The result of, of the stacking is an approximation of a zero offset section. Remember, we did we did the NMO corrected data before. So after we do the NMO correction all the offset become at the zero offset position and then once we have the zero offset position we do the stacking then it become a seismic section all right for a deeper layer the reflection do not exactly come from the below this mp you need to remember this one for a deeper layer we we need to apply another procedure that that is called dmo which is deep move out which we will learn later on in lecture number 13. On the of the stacking process, is a true representation of the, sub, uh, of the earth subsurface to improve signal to noise ratio. Basically, stacking is one of the good things to improve the signal to noise ratio. To turn attenuate multiples a little bit, not really much, but still have some uh, potential to attenuate the multiples, as well as to reduce data volume. If you compare the whole cube of your seismic data, if you uh, after the stacking is let's say uh, 300 megabyte but if you process the whole short gathers it will give you actually approximately one to two terabytes so you can see after you do the stacking basically you eliminate not eliminate you sum up all the trace and you average the trace become one trace so basically all the information has been lost because the other information from different offset has become one one value but in this, in the meantime, 
you reduce the data volume. Therefore, if you do the processing after the stacking, it will it will speed up the process, while at the same time it will reduce the cost of the processing. The first stacking method that I will talk about is mean stack. Okay, all animal collected traces are summed and, summed and divided by the number of traces. Okay, in other words, you have a number of traces W I, and then you sum up all the number of traces and you divide by by a by total number of the traces. Okay, it's just an average stack, an average stack. The second stacking method is the weighted stack, more or less similar to the mean stack, but here we introduce alpha, which indicate a weight factor. Okay, meaning in other words, different trace will give you a different weighting. Okay, let's say you have you want to put more emphasis on the particular trace that contain a good, um, that have a good data quality. And you want to reduce the weighting factor for the trace that has a less data quality. Therefore, you can do that by using the weighted stack. Most of the time, during uh, in the real seismic data processing industry, we use weighted stack to do the stacking techniques. And finally, the stacking method that we will learn here is diversity stacking, uh, which is certain traces are mute and not included in the stacking procedure at all. In other words, you just remove the one that you want to the one that the have a very poor data quality, you just discard that kind of trace. Okay, when certain values differ too much from the average value, they can be mute. Okay, diversity stacking. This will reduce the influence of the influence of the spikes. The spikes normally came in uh, due to the uh, trace and uh, no the geophone problems. Okay, if you don't remove it during the trace editing, it will haunt you during the stacking method. Therefore. If you don't want to go back, then you can use the diversity te stacking techniques to to remove that particular traces. Exclusion of the trace with the minimum and maximum amplitude in the stacking procedure. Basically, the similar with the diversity stacking techniques. Okay, now we will we will see the effect of the velocity that we will in the previous lecture into the stacking techniques. Let's say this is your original CFP gathers. Okay, before the stacking. After you do after you do the after you do, do the velocity analysis and you apply the NMO corrected NMO velocity to the to the original CMP gathers, okay. Let's say the perfect velocity will give you a good stack response like this. Everything has been flat. Okay, just just we look into the NMO first. Don't look into the stack first. We look to the NMO. If you apply a if you apply a faster velocity. Okay, your your velocity is supposed to be in one thousand seven hundred, but now you apply the velocity of two thousand meter per second. Now you will have a under corrected NMO gathers. Okay, under corrected indicate that it the velocity you apply is much faster compared to the the supposed velocity that the the gathers will you will have. Therefore, the the consequence gather will see as a drop down like this and then if you apply a slow velocity a slower velocity like say in this case you apply 1500 instead of 1700 then you will see a over corrected nmo gathers okay. what is the consequence from this particular over corrected or under corrected nmo gathers if you do the stack of this particular nmo gathers you, you need to remember that the stacking indicate that it will sum up the traces, which is it will sum up this trace, this trace, this trace, this trace, this trace, and this trace, and do the average. Now, if you just if you sum up this trace and do the average, you will get a poor stack response like this because you will not see a clear where does the um, events that actually occur. Okay, compared to the good stack response, if you apply a good velocity. A just nice velocity that able to flatten the gathers, then you will have a very sharp stack response. Now, similarly, if you apply a work uh, uh animal velocity and you do the stacking, the response will be similar to the one that you have as a, in the under -corrected. Here, you can see that the importance of having a 
correct and then more velocity information. Otherwise, you will produce a poor stack response like undercorrected or overcorrected and then more This is an example of the stack section. Okay, after you apply and then more velocity and you do the stacking, basically the stack section that you normally see in your EMP project as well. Okay, this basically the outcome after for the interpretation okay, or in any other analysis. In the short gathers, you do all the analysis and once it came to the stat section, basically nothing much you can do with regards to eliminating the noise, eliminating the multiples and so on because everything has been discarded. Most of the traces has been discarded. Okay. Now, from the stat section, you can also have a velocity model and at the same time, you can overlay the velocity model on top of your stack. To produce something like this okay we will learn uh we already learned the velocity in previous lecture however we will also learn the velocity model which indicate here in this slides in the seismic wave imaging lecture okay how we can produce this kind of velocity model so that we can overlay on the stack and at the same time it will give you plenty of information with regards to subsurface structure at the same time, you can also develop the velocity model, not velocity model, the velocity analysis using the stacking velocity field. This one we normally see in the during the velocity analysis technique when you have a specific uh, stack section that indicate the velocity value. Okay. Another example of the stack section. Okay, this 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 figure was taken from the OCL mass book. If you have time, you can take a look from this book. And it will give you some idea how does the stack section was produced before this. If you apply again, okay. Actually, if you can see, as I mentioned in most of most of my lecture, if you apply an AGC, a simple gain like this, nothing much you can see just for display display purpose. But it will need it will not give you a real amplitude information of the subsurface. Okay, another example after you apply a process. Post processing stack compared to the just again some improvement before and after before and after like let's say in this skin this kind of thing okay before and after just as nothing much you can do but at least you have something some improvement from the post processing works as a summary basically we have three type of stacking methods mean mean stack, weighted stack, and diversity stack. So most of the time, during the in the industry, we, we will use the weighted stack. Okay, sometimes we just use the mean. Okay, for simple purpose. But diversity is part where. Okay, that's all from me for this lecture. Thank you very much, and we will see you in the next lecture. Thank you.